All right, guys, welcome to the final episode for the 500 point section for my army. Um, we're going to be picking up Belladama. She's going to be my, my uh, almost total warlord uh, general. I believe, if I remember correctly, that is what we call the leader in Age of Sigmar. And I'm generally going to, at least for the wolf, I'm going to be kind of following uh, Warhammer, the Warhammer Channel's actual guide, kind of. Uh, instead of basing it, though, um, with a brush and just completely wet brushing it, we're going to dry brush it. Oh, uh, Celestial, or uh, Goldthrown Gray. Mainly because I can't find my Celestial Gray. Um, but we're going to do something similar. I already painted the wolf that hangs out underneath her rock. Just because I want to be able to get underneath down here without covering this guy in paint. But he's already nice and done. So I left him separate. So now I'm going to go through. I'm just going to do a dry brush. Hold on. I still got a little bit more than I want. Dry brushing with whites and off whites and really light grays can be very tricky. So I'm trying to not cover him entirely. I just want to do a quick. And of course, if I don't like it, I can go through or go back with Otho and Gray later or on the next step. And I can just fully paint him if I have to. I would like to keep the... Uh, textured look for the fur just because they're very smooth on these GW models and the reason why I'm painting this first and I'm not say doing the little ledge or the tree fallen tree is because it's much easier to paint uh a brown or a gray over white than it is to try and cover up uh, than to try and cover brown or gray with white. So this way, if I make any mistakes and go so cover something I shouldn't, like right here, right there, I got just a little bit of celestial gray or go with celestial gray, ultimate gray. This way, it will. Be very easy to cover that with uh, either skin blade dinge or eshin gray or something like that or a, a darker color. So now that he's based, I'm gonna let him dry for a minute because we're gonna come in and I'm gonna use a thin down uh, contrast paint just to do a line over the top, just down through his tail, and then we'll dot the eyes black. And then we'll move on to the rest of the scenic base, and then we'll do Bella Dama herself. All right, so I kind of take back what I said at the end of the last clip, where I said we'd do the eyes and then all that. Before we did the scenic base, I'm actually going to go ahead and do the stone right now. Just because when I go back and do the claws on the wolf. I don't want to then dry brush the stone and then get the, the gray color all over the claws. So we're actually going to start with this. We're going to start with Scave and Blight Dinge and we're just going to dry brush the whole rock uh, her and her wolf are standing on. Don't worry if you cover these uh, Roots, they're really not important. We'll cover them later. And do your best to get under here. I'm not trying too, too, too hard to get everything covered, but just enough to where it looks good. All right, so there's the boulder based. 
And then I'm going to come in with a lighter gray. I still, I haven't quite decided which gray. And then I'll highlight that off a dry brush as well. And then we'll do the wood. The wood I'll do into standard drawing oxide, then one bank brown. It's pretty much my standard uh, wood color for everything. And then we'll do the claws, the teeth, and the eyes, or the wolf. We'll just knock that out, and then we'll do Belladonna herself. All right, so I've decided on Dawnstone for the highlight color for the boulder, which honestly kind of makes sense. Uh, if you watch the Warhammer channel, uh, pretty much every time they use Skaven Blight Dinge, they use Dawnstone as the highlight color. And I gotta agree, it's a nice, nice color for it. It's a good uh, step up. And we're just going to lightly catch the edges. Don't worry about under the boulder because uh, light will be having a hard time getting down there. Especially once we glue the wolf, uh, the second wolf in place. So it wouldn't make sense for our light to be there because the wolf would be blocking it out. And there we go. Alright, that's the boulder nice and done. We'll move on to the tree, and then we'll come back to the wolf and finish him up. All right, so now what we're gonna do is for the tree, we're gonna do a standard Rhinox hide base coat with dry brush. Just to give it a really dark brown, reddish brown, really, base to work off of. I really like this color for uh, for painting trees or handles and hilts that are wooden. It's a nice color for it. The, the reddish tones really help differentiate. It makes it pop a little bit. And I'm not too worried about these roots here. Now I think about it with dry brushing because I'll just get brown all over the place. So we're going to leave that um, as is. And then we'll let this dry for a second. Then we'll come with one thing brown as a highlight color. And then we can move on to everything else. Alright, I've got a dab of one thing brown on my dry brush. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a very light dry brush of Mordfang Brown over the Rhinox hide that we just did. So we really do just want this to be a highlight. We're not trying to overpower anything. Again, just like with the uh, boulder the wolf is standing on, you can get like the underside right out here that's sticking out, but do not paint the highlight down here because it makes literally zero sense to highlight down here. Light will not reach this area. Over here, though, you can get all right. So now the tree trunk is done. Perfect. Cool. Um, there's one more dry brushing layer. That's after we do the contrast paint stripe down the center of the wolf. So I'll see you in that step. All right. So if I remember correctly, in, Warham in the Warhammer Suits channel's official video for Balladama, they thinned down Drift Charger Gray to do the stripe down the center of the wolf. However, due to the rather dark colored nature of my wolf, I am not going to thin it down because I want a stronger color. And we're just going to straight down the center.
just to give a nice little blue stripe pattern. It'll be mainly prevalent right there along uh, the back of his neck. And uh, I'm not really sure what to call right here. I guess that's his chest. No, I work with dogs. You'd think I'd know what that's called. And then we'll do straight down the tail because her cloak is covering the rest of him. All right, then we'll leave that like that to dry for a little bit. And then we'll come in, we'll do a highlight of probably Corax white. It'll be a, a very light color. It might be Corax white, it might be Ceramite white. It'll be something like that, just to give him a highlight. And then we'll move on to Belladonna. All right. Everything's nice and dry. That, uh, what do you call it? Wow. Yeah, that contrast paint didn't really make much of a difference. On the tail, you can kind of notice it. But, nah, all right. Whatever. All right, so now I'm going to take a little bit of Abaddon on black. I'm just going to paint the eyes on this guy black. I'm not going to do anything fancy. He's not the focus. The focus is going to be Belladonna. Who... I am still unsure of exactly how I want to do her. I was kind of thinking of doing her... Uh, like doing some underpainting with grays. And then hitting her cloth with shyish purple to contrast paint. And I might do that. I might just, I might go red. I'm just not entirely sure. I know I want to do the cloth pretty much in all the same color, except for right down the center here in this little decorative trim. Hmm. All right, well, what I'm gonna do is off camera, I'm gonna dry brush the sword, silver, with lead belcher and necron compound. And then by then I will have decided, hopefully, on what color to do her jacket. So I will see you guys after that. All right, so there's been a couple of things that I've done off camera. So obviously, like I said, I did the sword. That was Lead Belcher and Necron and then Necron Compound. Um, I based the coat in corn red. I decided on red. We're going red. Um, and then I based the skin as well as the fur on the jacket as well as the hat in Corax White. We're going to do later on uh, with the fur on the up here. Because we're going to hit that with Apothecary White. Uh, and then for the skin, we're going to hit that with Colia Green Shade. But for right now, we need to do the highlights on the jacket. And we're, we're going to do volume highlights, not edge highlights. And I'm going to use Wasdaka Red. Because I'm not trying to do an orangey red. I'm just trying to get a nice red highlight. So we're just going to do... Like if you look right down here, it goes there's right down the arm. Nothing too fancy. We're not even going to blend it in. Well, I'm not going to blend it in. Because I... I do actually kind of like it. It's more rough like this. I don't know why. And then if it spills over onto the black, we'll tidy up the black with some Apodon black later. I already had to do it once with the uh, after I put the white down. And then right here with the knee. And then right up 
here. And then right here. Boom. Nice and easy like that. And then we come around to the back. Okay, so if uh, my phone picked the worst time to be like, hey, your uh, storage is full. It just cut off the video while I was doing the highlights. So I did two layers of the highlights. Um, I went ahead and I did the Colier Green Shade wash on the skin, the Apothecary White wash on the fur. And then I also came in with Carolberg Crimson and I dotted the eyes with it just to give it a little bit more of a bloodshot look because I'm going to leave the eyes white. Now what we're going to do while those washes are drying is we're going to come in we're going to do these feathers and what i think i'm going to do is i'm just going to do like a gray dry brush because all the artwork i see here it's like a gray blue highlight color on these feathers which is funny because that's kind of what i was going for with the raven on last week's direwolf all right so i have a little bit of scaven blight dinge Need a little bit more. I wiped off too much. I'm trying to do this quick. I'm not sure. I just cleared out a bunch of space on my phone, but I am worried that it will do that to me again. So yeah, that's just another reason why I do need to upgrade to an actual nice camera. Eventually, but for right now, I am making do with this. All right. So I'm actually going to leave that back. That keeps it nice and simple. While she will be the showcase piece of the army. Right. Uh, it's getting late. I don't want to have to do any painting tomorrow because it won't set in time and you know we'll be touching the models and all that so I don't want anything falling off or paint chipping so I'll leave it at that for now I'll come back when everything's dry we'll do the highlight for the skin and then uh we'll call it there because I'll glue the wolf on the base Now I'm going to come in with Ulthwing Gray, and I'm just going to do a little bit of highlighting on the raised surfaces. Here's what we're doing is we're just coming in and it's still a greenish like undead flesh kind of like what UW does with deepkin flesh but it's uh, more of a bl pale blue which I like more it's a little bit cleaner like the uh, the deepkin flesh method works perfect for Vargol's uh, Vargais, 
but for something like Beldama or Radicar or Lakavai, like a higher member of Vampire Society, I want them to be a little bit more cleaner, a little bit less Uh, maybe blood starved would be a good word for it. Oop, did I just? See, I just want I just want there to be a notable, noticeable skin tone difference between the higher echelons of the vampires and the rest of the vampires. All right, I'm gonna call that done. Oh, I still got all this trim. I, I'm gonna do that off camera. I'm just gonna do that in a metallic, probably silver. And then I'll show you guys the finished result. All right, here we go, guys. I almost called her Bell of uh, Lock of Eye. Bella Dama is all nice and painted up. And Finished and ready for play. Thank you all for watching.